This car crash during the Shang-Chi bus fight was real and filmed on location in San Francisco. But the shots we see right after were shot thousands of miles away on a soundstage in Australia. Perfectly matching the stunts, camera work, and visual effects in these shots was just one of the challenges in creating this six and a half minute fight sequence that took an entire year to make. So how did Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings pull off its unforgettable bus fight? Since the release of Shang-Chi, many have called this bus sequence the best fight scene in Marvel movie history. When putting this sequence together, director Dustin Daniel Cretton focused on constantly raising the stakes. That can be seen in everything from the number of fighters to the set itself. This is one of the big sequences I, I, I think I ever worked with all the elements. That's Andy Cheng, the film's fight coordinator. Doing kung fu on a moving surface added a brand new layer of difficulty for the experienced stuntman. To handle all the moving pieces, the action and the bus's path were mapped out thoroughly. How thoroughly? Well, even this shot of a passenger filming the fight on his phone was there since the storyboard phase. And the pre-visualized CGI shots of the bus's wild ride provided an accurate roadmap for the stunt team to plan around, as you can see here. To really nail down the moves, the team had to rehearse on the actual bus used in the scene, instead of just at the gym. Chang was inspired by a lesson he learned while working with Jackie Chan. We always have to have the sequence or storytelling with location. Sometimes you read the script, you know, oh, there's a happening in this thing, but you just do it at the gym, you start pretending, oh, this is the table. For me, I feel when you go to the location and see it, that, that's how you create things, because those things is really like not pretending. Practicing on the actual bus also allowed them to solve some practical challenges they might not have caught earlier. For example, Florian Monteanu, who played Razor Fist, was so tall that he kept hitting his head on the bus ceiling during rehearsals. We had to constantly remind him, hey, watch out, duck down. These rehearsals also identified where they should add rubber padding to the poles, bus floors, and chairs, which was useful here when this fighter collapses into a seat. And to make a flip like this happen on a set this crammed, the team reconfigured the buses so they could be taken apart. For example, all the chairs could be moved to make room for stunt people and camera operators, and the windows could be removed to allow a camera to pass through. The crew also built a sliding camera track up here, freeing up room for hand-to-hand -hand combat, like in this shot, which starts out behind Razor Fist and then ends up in front of him. After rehearsing, the next step was figuring out how to execute a fight scene on a moving set. Cheng wouldn't have been able to safely achieve these stunts on location, as the bus speeds downhill with many difficult twists and turns. So the crew constructed two bus rigs to simulate the movement. The first was built three feet off the ground on a rig capable of moving and shaking, but it was used for more standard driving shots with a somewhat stable surface for fighting. You only can make the bus like this much. The tipping may be 5-10 degrees, that's maximum. The second bus was built on a 15-foot-high gimbal capable of tilting at a 45-degree angle. It was ideal for when the bus careens down steep hills. And because it was so high up, there was plenty of room for the back to move and swing rapidly. They can be like this, you know, and then they can rotate. And then they have more room, they can be like this. The bus could even drive on an angle, like when it's wedged between a garbage truck and a row of cars. And the previs helped the stunt and special effects teams adjust the gimbal's exact movements before filming. But the most difficult shots to get were the ones when Shang-Chi jumps out of the bus. They had to make it look like the character was really hitting the ground and trying to regain his balance. So the stunt team set up a treadmill next to one of the buses. So in the real life, if the bus is moving, if we touch a fall, they'll be like constantly sliding because you cannot stand on it because the, the fall is moving. The illusion wouldn't work unless the bus kept moving, which is why you can see it bouncing up and down off the ground. This particular moment was so complicated that the stunt required both bus rigs. For the first part, the team filmed a stunt double as Shang-Chi dodging Razor Fist and then jumping onto the roof. This was done on the higher gimbal as it required a sharper turn. So that one, we can tip the bus like 45 degrees and then boom, flip him up and it's under the ceiling. The second part was filmed as one continuous take that ends in a close-up, meaning Simu Liu had to do the stunt himself. So they used the lower bus rig. Liu first positioned himself here. Less rumbling meant he could run the length of the bus, slide, and grab the front mirror as this techno crane followed along. Chang estimates that they nailed it after 10 takes. 
But not everything went according to the pre-visualized plan. Like this shot, for example. In final rehearsals, Cretton didn't find it believable that Shang-Chi could pin Razor Fist against the wall simply by putting his foot up against this pole. He's such a big guy, I cannot really buy how he can have enough power to trap him like this. So Cheng reshaped the scenery, switching up the pole for these chairs. That way, Shang-Chi could place one foot against that seat and then jump up and land on Razor Fist's back. He put one foot on the ceiling and then against him using gravity and uh, all his weight on top. But for Cheng, this might have been the toughest shot to get. When Shang-Chi kicks Razor Fist into the breakaway back of the bus before diving into the front section. To get this shot, Liu had to jump 20 feet while doing a 180 degree turn onto the ground. And so they wouldn't have to actually destroy the bus. It was all shot in front of a blue screen. An even faster slider track gave the camera enough speed to capture the jump while moving back to give Liu plenty of room to land on his mark right in front of the lens. And then the camera moves super fast. It's almost like chasing gravity. It took roughly 15 takes, an entire day's worth of work for about four seconds of footage. Now, none of these action highlights would work if the soundstage shots and the real shots on location didn't match up. The two units shot simultaneously, but there were lots of adjustments the crew made to make it feel more organic, like lighting. Cinematographer Bill Pope built light grids around each bus. The lights were rigged to imitate light captured on location in San Francisco and cast accurate shadows. Notice the bus's accordion flaps moving as if they were being hit by real wind? That's because these crew members manually moved the flaps around. In the end, it's hard to tell that this car crash was filmed in San Francisco and the shot of two vehicles wedged together was shot on a soundstage thousands of miles away. The two falling over this, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you come back. Yeah. Yeah.